Hey guys, check it out. Today I'm going to take a mechanical keyboard that I have inside the sleeve and I'm going to make it programmable. So inside the sleeve here we've got this, what is a standard quickfire rapid from Cooler Master. This is the stealth edition, so it's got side printed keys. This is just uh, an off the shelf version, uh, exactly like you'll find at Amazon or whatever. That's it. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to turn it into a programmable keyboard. Now, if you don't know what the difference is between a standard keyboard and a programmable keyboard, you should check out my other video that I did a, a short while ago. That link is on screen now. So that video really shows the difference between uh, a programmable keyboard and a non-programmable keyboard. And really, this keyboard has a controller switch right in under here. And what I'm going to do is take that out and replace it. So I've ordered this in. This is a Frosty Flake. This is arrived to me by Desk Authority user Bepiphany. And Bepiphany has figured out a way to replace the controller on this deck and turn it into a fully programmable board, which is super cool. It's really super cool. So what I'm going to need to do this, uh, I've got the Frosty Flake here, uh, and you'll find a link for that in the About section. Uh, I've got a, a card here, a magnetized card. Uh, this is for a job that I'm leaving, so I'm happy to try to wreck that card. Uh, and I'm also going to need a computer so that I can actually program this. Oh, and one other thing I'm going to need is a magnet. Now, I haven't done this before, but what I understand is that you need a magnet in order to reset the Frosty Flake when you first use it. After that, we'll set a hotkey for it, but on first run, we're going to need one of these. So there's mine there. It's very tiny, but it is definitely there, and it is definitely a very strong magnet. Last thing we'll need is a computer so we can program it, but we'll get to that later. First thing, let's pop this puppy open. To do that, I'm just going to grab this card, flip this keyboard upside down. Oh, my potato key came out. Just going to flip this upside down, grab a screwdriver, and head for that. There we go. Beautiful. All right, with that out, I'm just going to run this card. Down. Now, you can see I've just I've just got it in there. And all I'm going to do now is just force it down. I just want you guys to see, as this first bit is coming out here, it's just these little these little bumps, and I've just had to get the card in between the top sheet and these little bumps, and that's all I was really doing on that side. But before I pull it out too far, I'm just gonna just gonna flip this round. It's got the same thing on the back side. There we go. So that's ready to come off. I'm just gonna turn this back over and take this top sheet off. Okay, so here on the right, we can see that we've got this controller board. Now this controller board, if I can show you the back side, I've just gotta get this, there we go, get this up. Just to show you under a typical keyboard, this under here is where my USB lives. This is the switch that goes to the, or sorry, the uh, cable that connects it to the main board. You can see here, that's where this controller board is soldered in. And all of these switches basically go to that controller board before that controller board runs out to this. So I sent a message to Bepiphany earlier, and he says that all you need to do is just get this board up. So let me use my screwdriver and see if I can just wedge that up gently. So there you go. There's the old controller. It's 
pretty cool, actually. <laughs> These things are sort of neat. Uh, anyways, here's the new controller, so let's just get inside this thing. Let's just have a look at that. Let's have a quick look at that. So this is the Frosty Flake. This is actually the reason that I recommend these QFRs as beginner boards. I mean, they're, they're decent quality, they're uh, not very expensive, but the best part is they can be fully programmable boards. So let's just make sure I get this lined out. Okay, all right. That should be what I need to do. Okay, for the next bit, I'm going to get the computer fired up. I'm going to leave this open because I still want to be able to get to this if I need to do something, if I need to remove it or um, replace the old one or get the magnet on it. So I'm just going to leave it open for now, but let's uh, get it plugged in. So here's a USB cable I made myself. I'm just going to plug this in. Now remember, if you're making your own USB cables, you want to test them before you do them on a test board. So I've just plugged it in, and you can see straight away it recognizes it as it recognizes it as a keyboard. I'm just going to click continue here, and that's uh, left shift. So that's Z, and right side. That's that. It's an ANSI keyboard, and that's it. It's recognized it. This is just the back of a notepad. Okay, so you'll find this part of the tutorial in the about section below. Just having a look here at the CoStar replacement controllers wiki section of the Desk Authority site. So here, the one I've been doing uh, at the moment is the Frost and Flake, which is for the CM Storm QFR. I'm just gonna scroll down a little further here. To flash the controller, there's a couple different bits we need to do. First, we're gonna be using Metallica's uh, easy AVR USB keyboard firmware, which as you know I love because of its catchy name. So once you go over to this webpage, which is on GeekHack, which is the location where Metallica has his key mapping software, you can find down below here in the download section, you'll be able to download this if you're using Windows or multi-platform if you want to use it for Mac or Linux or you prefer using Python and Windows. Uh, of course, I've already downloaded a copy of that. And then, finally, you'll be looking to download this, which is Flip. So I'm just going to download that now. Um, so I'm actually going to have to download this one for Windows. I have a copy of Windows that I'm running in the background. So let's run that, and I'll get to that shortly. Gonna have to do a couple extra steps here, but the first things first, I'm going to need to get it running so that. Okay, a couple extra steps here I'm gonna have to take, but first I need to get Easy Key Map multi platform running so that I can create a, a DAT file with data saved for what the keyboard's going to be. Then I'm gonna need to save off a hex file so that I can flash that to the keyboard shortly. Uh, and that extra step is gonna involve bootloading Windows, but in the meantime, I need to still build that first key mapper software bit. So let's just grab that, get that going here. So it's a little bit off screen, but all I'm doing is new default layer. Then what I'm going to do is open the Frosty Flake. I'm pretty sure I've got the Frosty Flake V2 here, but actually, actually it doesn't say. Huh. 
I'm going to stick with I have V2 since it's the new version. So now that we've loaded that up, let's just make sure that we know. I'm going to change this key from application. I'm going to change that over to my function layer. Now that I've got that as my function layer, this is my function layer. Make sure to change that so that it remains my function layer even as I get to it. And then I'm going to make escape be my boot key. Scan code boot. Okay, the reason that's important is that that combination of function plus escape is going to allow this compute this keyboard to go into its boot state or the state in which it can be programmed. Again, that's really the most important bit, and that's the first step that you need to take every time to make sure that you can continue to program and update this thing. So that's good enough for now. I'm just going to save my layout as, and I'll save it here into my. I'm going to save it with a pretty memorable name here, just qfr.dat. Now that I've done that, I need to do the next step, which is build the firmware. And we'll call that qfr.hex. Save that. And the firmware is successfully saved. OK, next step is going to be getting into Windows and getting that hex file onto the keyboard. OK, so now I'm running. Windows 10 preview, and I'm doing that inside of a virtual box window. So this is a little more complicated than it probably deserves to be if you're running a Windows installation. I'm not really sure what this is, but what I really want is that one, that one that's not selected. So I think what I have to do at this point is use the magnet. The magnet doesn't seem to be working. There we go. At Mel, at Mega, 32U DFU. Okay. That's the one that I'm going to select through there. Now, I wish I had paid closer attention. Mega 32U2. 32U2. So that's that one. OK. Select a communication medium, USB. OK. It looks like we got there. It looks like we've got the damn little thing. So now I should be able to just put that over to the side in case. Do USB. Open USB. Yes. OK. But now the next problem, which I hadn't anticipated, is that I need to get the hex file that I created on my Mac into here. I'm not 100% sure how to do that yet. Now, I'm not sure how to use this. Race target memory device. Race target memory device. Load hex file. Now all I have to do is start figuring out cool things to make it do. So let's unplug it. Plug it back in. Looks like it's a frosty flake. Now when I press my special key combination, which should be function potato, this change back to an atmel at mega. So it's worked. We've now got uh, this board programmed. Uh, and programmable, which is even more important, and we can start to do whatever we want with it.
Unfortunately, it's extremely complicated because I have to use Windows along with this and uh, VirtualBox, which is never easy. Uh, if somebody wants to go out there and make a Python-based program so that it's really easy to do, that would be great. But I'm going to start programming this thing, so why don't I put it back together? And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you want more information about this or any of the other projects, check the About section or check those things on screen now. If you found this video particularly useful, of course, you can buy me a coffee in the About section. Thanks to 1UP Keyboards for the sleeve. Thanks again for watching. See you guys again soon. Don't forget to subscribe.